In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Divi role editor. Now, if you're not familiar with roles within WordPress, they are assigned whenever you create a new account, and they just represent the type of user you are within the WordPress dashboard and the type of privileges you have within the WordPress dashboard. For example, if you're an administrator, that's one role. It's the highest role, and it allows you to do everything. You can upload new themes. You can change themes. You can you know, adjust your website titles and permalinks and do all this stuff um, that only the, um, you know, owner of the site should be able to do. Um, next uh, on the list is editor. Editors um, can do a lot. They can make new pages. They can make new posts. You know, they can add content to your website, but they can't control, um, you know, the overarching settings, like I said, such as, you know, a lot of those general settings and, um, things like theme options and, um, you know, uploading stuff and, and adding and installing plugins, deleting plugins, all that stuff. So it might be common if you're a freelance developer to have yourself as an administrator. And then when you hand over the site to your client, you might, that might want to make them an editor. And this would allow them to, you know, control the content on their site, but it wouldn't allow them to do, you know, things that might be disastrous to the website, such as deleting things, uh, deleting plugins and themes or installing new plugins and themes or updating things when you're not ready to update, you know, these things that they might not understand uh, the re repercussions of. And so it's something we recommend anyways, if you're, if you're, if you're managing a, a client website to keep yourself as an admin and then um, create a user role um, for your clients that, that uses the editor user role. And that can, you know, just create a little bit safer of a relationship for you and your client. But those roles don't have any control over Divi. So no matter what role you are, if you're an editor, a contributor, or an administrator, those are, those are three roles that allow um, the creation of content on your website. Um, as long as you have access to pages, you know, and creating new pages, you can have full access to the Divi Builder. And so what we did is created a whole list of roles and privileges that can be assigned to the different uh, standard WordPress roles, as well as any uh, custom role that you might create using a third-party plugin. And so, for example, you could um, have your administrators have full access to the, to, the Divi, to the Divi Builder, but you might have your editors, your editor roles, which are your, are your clients, have limited access to the Builder. Maybe they can edit stuff, but they can't delete stuff, or maybe they can only edit certain modules. Maybe you don't want them ha to have access to the Divi library, or you don't want them to mess with the global modules. Or you just want to kind of simple, or you just want to simplify the Builder and take out settings. You can take out settings for certain roles. And so that's what the Divi role editor does. It limits the Divi builder um, for each particular role or, or custom roles that you've created. And so just to clarify what a role is one more time, if you go to add a new user within WordPress, um, you can see the roles here. And like I said, there's administrator, editor, author, contributor, and sometimes you'll have custom roles as well. So we have WooCommerce installed, and they have a couple of uh, custom roles, which is customer and shop manager. A customer, for example, is um, kind of similar to a subscriber, doesn't have access to creating pages and stuff, but allows them to log into their CRM. Okay, let's jump into the Divi role editor, and I'll show you how this stuff works. To access the Divi role editor, go over to the Divi drop-down menu, and then click on the role editor link, and this will launch the Divi role editor. At the top, you're going to see various tabs, one for each of the different author roles, that you have uh, within WordPress. Now, there are four roles um, by default that have access to the post editor and therefore access to Divi, and those are administrator, editor, author, and contributor. And so, like I said, you might um, have a client that you've assigned the editor role to, and so if you want to um, edit their priv privileges within the Divi Builder, you'd want to click on the Editor tab. And you may notice some um, additional roles here, which um, could be assigned from various plugins you have installed. For example, there's the shop manager that comes with WooCommerce. And so you can edit these custom roles as well. OK, so just to show you how this works, I'm going to be editing the editor role. And then I also have logged in um, as that editor over here. So as I edit the privileges, I'm going to show you um, what that does within the builder. Okay, so coming back to the role editor here, um, the different privileges are uh, categorized. So at the very top here, you're gonna kind of have the highest level um, options. 
In this case, that's access to the, to the Divi library and access to page options. Page options are the, is that little Divi settings box you get um, to the right of the post editor. Next up, you can um, enable or disable various high-level options within the Divi Builder. For example, you can disallow people from adding new items. You can stop them from editing, them, from editing items, stop them from moving items, and so on. Um, there's various library, lib Divi library settings. You can <coughs> um, disallow people from saving to the library or adding from the library. And you can also stop them from editing global, global items. So you might have um, a global item you're using as a global footer throughout the whole site, and you're worried about your client accidentally editing that global item and messing up the entire site um, in one fell swoop there. So you can um, just disable global items for your clients if that's um, some, something you're worried about. You can enable or disable whole settings tabs. So something I like to do is um, if I'm introducing someone to the Divi Builder, I might just disable the advanced settings and custom CSS, especially if I, as the designer, have already spent a lot of time and um, configuring these options for, Div for Divi. And I really just want the you know, client to be able to edit the content, the text. I'll just um, only enable the general settings. That's something you can do, for example. But you can also drill down within the general settings to various settings types. For example, you can disable settings and enable them um, based on what they do. So, for example, you could have um, an, a role that only allows the client to edit content and colors, for example in which case you'd want to disable configuration and fonts and buttons and layouts. And once this is saved, when that client logs in as the editor and they open up the you know, blurb module settings, for example, there's not going to be any settings for editing fonts. You're not going to be able to adjust the layout, for example. You're not going to be able to change the icon from you know, being at the top to being on the left. All you're going to be able to do is you know, adjust the blurb header, adjust the content, and change the colors, and that's it. And maybe you even, even want to take away the color option because you're afraid they're going to mess with the design. Just um, in that case, you might want to only enable edit content. In that case, all they're going to see when they open up those blurb module settings um, is the text fields to edit the header text, edit the icon, um, edit the content itself. So that's a great way to use um, the Divi Role Editor as well to really limit what your client can do just so they're, you know, they're not too overwhelmed with all the options and also so they don't accidentally you know, edit something they didn't mean to edit. And um, you can also enable or disable specific modules. So if you don't want your client messing with specific modules, you can just disable their use here. Um, for example, you might want to disable the shop module if you don't have uh, you know, WooCommerce installed. Or you might want to disable the code module if you don't want them you know, trying to add custom code to your site. Um, maybe you want to disable you know, the portfolio and blog modules since you know, those take a bit more understanding. You, know, you have to have products, or uh, sorry, um, projects and uh, blog posts before those modules would even work. So that's uh, some examples. So if you want to disable those, you can here. And then when your client goes in um, and tries to add a new module, these aren't even going to show up. And so let's just show you how this works exactly. So like I said, I, I've logged in as an editor on my other page here, and I'm just going to disable a few things to show you how it works. So let's just say I'm, a new, I have, I'm creating this role for my client. I want them to be able to edit stuff on the page, but I don't want them to be able to add anything, anything to the page. I don't want them to move stuff around either. I just want them to be able to come in and you know, edit their header text, edit their body text. Maybe you know, they want to change their company message, that kind of stuff. And so I'm not going to allow them to add stuff. I'm going to disable that. I'm not going to allow them to move stuff either. I'm just going to allow them to edit things. And so if I save this, and then when I go over um, to my editor role here and log in, you're going to see, well, there's no more option to add things. I can't move stuff either. You know, the drag and drop functionality is gone. But I can still edit stuff. I can still go into the blur module settings, and I can, you know, edit those settings accordingly. And so that's you know one just quick way to really simplify things for your clients. Um, you might also want to limit the use of the Divi library since you know kind of that's shared by the administrator and and the editor. Um, you might not want to allow them to add things to the library, or uh, add things from the library. So if, for example, if I save that, go back here, refresh. Um, no more saving to the library. Obviously, I can't add from the library because I disabled adding stuff altogether. 
But now the DV Builder has really been streamlined to just editing what's already there, what you set up for the client. Moving down, um, we already went over the library, but if you want to enable the library, but then you know disable certain you know, functions within it. So for example, maybe you want to allow them to use stuff from the library, but you don't want to allow them to save new things to the library and clutter your library. You also maybe don't want them to uh, be able to edit global items. You can disable those individually as well. Um, moving down to the general settings tabs, like I said before, maybe I don't want them to be able to mess with advanced design settings and custom CSS. If I disable those, well then you notice when they open up the settings for any of these modules, rows, or sections, they're just going to get the general settings. Those adva that advanced design settings tab and the CSS tab you usually see here, those have been uh, removed because you know they probably don't need to, to mess with that stuff. You've already spent the time designing your site to look great. Um, they just need to change their content. But moving even f uh, further and drilling down into the individual settings, for example, coming back here, um, let's look at this call to action setting. Maybe you don't want to allow them to, you know, mess with the orientation and color and the button. Um, Yeah, the admin labels, and all this stuff. There's a bunch of stuff they just, you know, maybe don't, they don't need to see, don't need to mess with. Um, you just want to allow them to adjust the actual content, you know, the text, um, whether it be um, the button text or the, or the content itself here. And so you can disable those things. So let's say I only want them to be able to edit colors and content. I don't want them to be able to edit fonts or the layout or the configuration. And just to clarify, We've kind of grouped the options that, that are available in, in, to Divi um, into these, you know, <coughs> few categories here. And so it generally, configuration means kind of like the overarching configuration of that module. For example, if you're working with a blog module and um, the configuration might be, you know, selecting your categories, kind of the, those, those general settings that affect what is output in the module. That's the configuration. The layout is in other categories that might affect, for example, if you're editing your blurb and you want to put the icon on the top or put it on the left, or maybe you're editing your, your blog module and you want to switch between grid layout and um, you know standard layout. Those are layout options. Um, buttons, so whenever there's a button, um, we have a lot of options around buttons, especially in the advanced settings tab, so you can disable or enable that. Fonts, a lot of things have font selection options, so that's a different thing you can enable and disable. Content, that always just controls the things inside the module, the, the header text, the, the body text, the icon itself and the blurb, you know, that kind of stuff. And colors, uh, pretty self-explanatory, editing text colors, background colors, and stuff like that. So like I said, it's pretty common if you're handing something over to a client, maybe you just want them to be able to edit the actual content itself. You don't want them to accidentally, you know, deselect all their blog, you know, categories or switch to grid layout when, you know, the page just really wasn't meant to have a grid layout. And so, in this case, I've, I'm only letting, letting them edit content and colors and buttons. And so I'm going to save these roles, switch back here, and then when you open any of these settings, there's going to be stuff uh, missing. So if I open up my blurb module, for example, I can just edit the content. That's it, just the content and the colors. Um, there's no more option for uh, um, switching between icon uh, types, you know, circle icon, not circle icon. There's no option to change the layout, whether it be, you know, using this the um, icon on the left or the icon on the top. They can just come in here and change their title, change the URL, change the icon itself, change the icon color, change the text color and stuff. And if I were to go back here and remove colors, well, even some of that, even some of that stuff would would be removed as well. All those color options. So I can come back here, uh, remove the ability to edit colors. And when I save and refresh, you're going to see that these blurb settings have been limited even more. So no more color options. All you can do is edit the content. Put in the title, choose the icon, um, type in the blurb content itself. And so, yeah, this is a pretty good way to, to kind of hand over the website to the client because it takes away all the things they don't need to see and also takes away the things that could allow them to make your website a little bit more ugly than you had planned, right? You'd, you'd, you've chosen the colors already that look great. You've put a lot of work into that layout. 
And, um, but you don't want to waste a bunch of time, you know, every time the client wants to, you know, update their bio on their about page, you don't want to have to be logging in there every single time. So, um, this is how you hand over that to your client. And finally, um, enabling and disabling, um, entire modules. So if we allow them to add and delete items again, but we don't want them, for example, to be able to use the shop or blog module. If I saved that and went back here and refreshed, if I were ever to add a new module, um, those wouldn't show up. So you're not going to see the shop module or the blog module here anymore. And so if you want to limit your um, clients to using just, you know, kind of simple modules, then that's how you do that. So yeah, it's a basic overview of the role editor, and you can you know create custom roles um, for each of the standard uh, WordPress roles, as well as you know use custom roles that you've created with plugins or custom roles that are automatically added with plugins. For example, the shop manager here, which was added by WooCommerce.